Today's topic, TJ Watt. The question, just how good is he? Let's get into it. If I had to pick one move that TJ Watt is best at, it would be a move like this. Uh, he's going up against the right tackle right here, Havenstein. Uh, and what he's going to do is he's going to use do a speed rush. So he's taking advantage of his speed on this play. That's what he likes to do. That's my favorite move that he will pull off. And watch how he does this. So it's as the name would apply. He's using speed. He's going to run as far to the outside of the tackle as he can. And so now you see that uh, the player he's going up against has his right hand right there on uh, J.J. Watt's sort of chest area. But there's, uh, excuse me, T.J. Watt, not J.J. Watt. I might make that mistake more than once this video. Uh, you see that Watt, uh, you know, one thing that he's doing so well is how low he gets. So he's doing a speed rush, and he's getting low. And this is necessary because what you do with a speed rush is you move around the tackle, and you get to the side of the tackle, and the, then basically the way that you could lose is if the tackle pushes you behind the quarterback. Not only is that not allowing you to get a sack, but it also can allow a quarterback to you know, get outside the pocket. So it can be a double loss. So you have to be careful with this. But what's really great about Watt is, again, how quick he is. He got to his spot so quickly. Uh, this Ram player, he can only get one hand on Watt. And even that one hand, he can't really get it at a good angle. He's kind of just reaching out, and it's nearly a hold. And as you see, it's going to end up being a hold, but Watt is still able to get this sack right here. I mean, that easily could have been called a hold. Uh, it wasn't, but still a sack. And I mean, that's just what uh, that's 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 what he can do. Is his speed rush is probably his number one attribute. So that's okay. There's ways to beat a speed rush, right? Well, yeah. I mean, the obvious one is a chip. Uh, this play is not a chip, but but it's kind of a somewhat of a similar idea. There's a tight end in the game on the right side where TJ Watt is lined up. Uh, and so, you know, that tight end, he's running, he's running about, he's not blocking, but just the fact that he's there, uh, typically this now means that your tackle is going to have more time to run over and get in position to make a play. You know, Watt is going to that direction. You know, Watt is going to, at this point, it basically is telling Watt, hey, go ahead and do a speed rush. You do, you basically now have to do a speed rush, but because you have to do a speed rush, this will give our tackle more time to get over and get in position. And that's what 73 is going to do. He's going to run right over to try to get in position. But even with that, even with him knowing this is coming, he is not able to get in position to really get a handle on Watt right here. Watt is just too much faster. He gets around him and slaps the ball out of Goff's hands for the fumble. Uh, and, you know, I mean, listen, TJ Watt, again, that's another luxury of having a guy who's great at, uh, you know, a, a, using your speed to your advantage, using the speed move, is that it's going to create some fumbles. It really is. You will get some strip sacks uh, if you'd like to do a speed rush a lot. That is his bread and butter. That's when he has to get a sack. That's what he does. But he doesn't need to get do that to get sacks. I mean, I think that a lot of his sacks are set up from his speed. But, uh, you know, the fact that he uses this speed, it can set things up. Uh, and that's still a very effective way to get a sack, like on this play. So he's going up, you know, one-on-one -on -one against a tackle right here. Uh, and what you're going to see right when this ball is snapped is look at how far over 77 right there moves. He instantly is getting over because he knows he can't get beat uh, by a speed rush and this is kind of what you have to do when you're going up against TJ Watt because he is so quick but now Watt you know he sees how much separation there is between a, a tackle and a guard so he's going to try to squeeze in between that gap right there and now what he's going to do is just a little swipe move uh, you know basically exactly what the name implies he gets his right hand he's going to slap the uh, the tackle's left hand and try to get to the inside Typically, you'll see this swipe move happen the other way, where you go around to uh, the outside of the tackle, but with this separation, he's going to go to the inside of the tackle, and all he has to do is, you know, just swipe his hand away a little bit, and he gets a straight shot to Fitzpatrick, and, you know, Miami was lucky that Fitzpatrick just got rid of that ball quickly. That could have easily been bad news, and it can work in other ways, too, like on this play. Uh, he's going up one-on-one -on -one against 77 right there, the right tackle. Uh, and right when the ball is snapped, you notice what he's going to do. So he gets to the outside, and he's, again, going to try to break to the inside, kind of. But again, you know, 77, this is the first time uh, I've shown a play where the tackle actually got to the spot he was trying to get to. You know, the first three, uh, you know, it was basically just what speed was just too much for these tackles to handle. This time, it's not necessarily too much for a tackle to handle. This time, a tackle can handle this. And for what, the reality is, 
Uh, th- his strength isn't his best attribute. Uh, you know, it's just it's that's not what what makes him great. You know, I'm not saying it's bad, but his speed is what makes him great. Uh, and you know, his quickness, his, his explosiveness is what makes him great. I mean, this guy could he could play basketball. He really could. I mean, he's that explosive. But what he's gonna do on this play, and this is another thing that makes him so great, is his technique. Notice how he has his right arm on the left shoulder pad area right there. He gets his right arm, his right arm right there. Uh, so at this point, for the offensive lineman. Uh, what do you do? You're already naturally moving to the outside, and he's trying to get his hand placement the way he wants it. He's trying to grab on, you know, and grab TJ Watts, uh, Watts' own left shoulder pad. That's what he's going for. And so that's going to be really his biggest point of contact. And so what Watt is going to do is go for a swim move right here because that is the biggest point of contact. This is difficult to pull off, but again, Watt is so explosive. He can just lift his hand up like that. He breaks in a little bit. And again, it's that explosiveness and his ability to shift his body weight. Uh, also, his skinniness, I think, helps him a lot. You know, he he does. He looks incredibly skinny. I mean, he looks like a toothpick out there. And, you know, he is a little bit uh, on the skinny side for sure. I mean, 6'4", 230 pounds. Uh, for comparison, J.J. Watt's 6'5", 290. So, again... Obviously, Watts on the other side of that spectrum, but uh, definitely he is a bit skinny, but he uses that to his advantage, you know, and listen, uh, if you are more lean, there are ways you can use that to your advantage, and he showed it right there, and he isn't afraid to play mind games like on this one, again, one-on-one against the right tackle right here. Uh, and right when this ball is snapped, you notice, look at his right arm, and notice how it looks like he's going about to get his right arm uh, out, and it's almost like he's going to use that as his principal point of contact. This would sort of be a, a stab and grab move is what you would typically do, where you put your right arm uh, on the left side of that Indianapolis player's body. Uh, you then just ch- grab his left hand. You sort of move it out of the way, try to get around him that way. That's what he's sort of faking as though he's doing. So for his assigned tackle, what are you trying to do? Well, you got to basically, first off, you're probably going to want to get your left arm and knock that uh, right arm out of your way. And then he gets his own right arm and sort of just not allow that to get grabbed onto by TJ Watt. That's what he's trying to do here. So essentially, he's going to have to move both of his arms right at this instant. But right at this instant, that's when TJ Watt decides to latch on. So you look at his assigned tackle. Uh, he looks like he's, you know, he looks like, you know, someone trying to k- pick up something and they don't know how to pick up uh, a heavy object and they're really struggling with it. You know how he ha- his hands are like that? Both his hands are underneath like this. This is not good hand placement. And from this point, it's much easier for uh, Watt right now to just run over. He doesn't need hand placement because he has the, the positioning that he wants. He can just keep running and he is able to actually make that sack. Uh, just a, again, sort of a, a fun play and just sort of outsmarting your opponent. Pretend like you're doing something at the last second, mix it up. Sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes it does. And, you know, again, he's a smart player and just a really talented player. Again, his speed, uh, it's just fantastic. And I guess I maybe should be a little bit uh, more clear when I talk about speed. You know, uh, I mean, like, uh, it's not like his 40-yard, you know, his 40-yard dash is, is good for, a, what for, you know, for a linebacker. But uh, I'm more so like, just his explosiveness. Explosiveness is the better term I would use. Explosiveness is insane. So yeah, that's what I think. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.